Hello. Oh, I forgot to put the little book underneath that uh, Jim told me to put there so it would look a little better, maybe next time. Uh, wanted to say hello and uh, almost skip doing this one. There's just so many things buzzing around in my head and definitely don't feel calm right now. And that's okay. Like it's okay to be in there in those things. And I am in them right now, these different thoughts that are going on. And I know the space is out there. I know that calm is out there. I know I can shift my attention back and forth. And I guess that's kind of why I got on to just be the reminder of that, to say hello, to let you know I love you, to offer you a little space, and for me to grab a little space right now. The value of putting this attention of mine in a specific place that I'm choosing. Rather, I can feel it already. A yawn is usually a release of energy, not just uh, boredom with myself. But the power of even in the midst of all of the stuff that's going on in these times, to put your attention in a place that you are choosing. I wasn't really taught that, the power of that um, wasn't emphasized. It was emphasized to be in reaction to this math class and then the English class and then this job and then this game and all those different things. Notice there's this space between you and the screen. And how that changes things. And then what there is, is to mm, it feel so good. What there is, is to go back to the things that are upsetting things that are other than this feeling, not to dishonor them, not even to try to make them go away, but to try to have this dialogue of awareness between this nothing, fight, flight, freeze, turned off, space with everything, spirit space, God space, quantum space, the field, whatever you want to call this space, have a dialogue between this and this world that we live in, instead of just this monologue that's going on constantly in reaction to the stuff of the world. So at the bottom of the newsletter, and I should really put those links at the bottom of um, this uh, video, are the, are the three people I really listened to through this whole uh, ramping up ever since the world became aware of the coronavirus, which it was first called. And then in later January, it started sometime earlier, right, with that first uh, person who had it. But by late January, China was building uh, 10,000 bed hospitals in just a matter of a week. And since that time, every single day, I've been listening to over an hour, under two, but over an hour of information from these three sources, doctors. And um, yesterday, both of the doctors that are kind of reporting on things um, noted that really, um, the time is here where very soon we're going to hit this um, rapid part of the exponential rise. It's all exponential, but when you get to a certain point, the numbers, the magnitude of the numbers um, that are compounding is just staggering. And so you have this dialogue if you want between infinity and this, I'm going back into this 
after having come out to this awareness of space. Hmm. That we are in this time now where the numbers will increase so rapidly. And then a statistic yesterday that um, there's this thing called herd immunity, which is where we're headed. We're going to get there. And uh, in order to be able to like walk around if you're uninfected and have a very, very small chance of getting an infection, right? Or that that infection isn't going to create another big blossoming of cases. Mm -hmm. You need to have about 80, 86%, depending on who you listen to, of the people having an immunity. And whenever a person has uh, COVID-19, we gain an immunity from, the, mm -hmm. from having it. The other way is via a vaccine, which is being worked on so hard. Anyway, 80 to 86% of the population needs to develop immunity before this thing sort of doesn't spread. And the <clears throat> shocking figure was if you've been following what's happening in Italy, completely massively overwhelmed, um, <clears throat> that they have maybe 0.8% of the people now that have immunity. That means they're 1% of the way to herd immunity in terms of number of people infected, 100 times more than they're currently dealing with. And so actually, I'm really glad to be here on this little video with you because it's really easy to have my attention just there and not be able to grab it out. Because I'm here with you and when I'm working with people, it's because I'm there. It's no dishonoring of that fact to pull my attention away from it for a second. I'm not hiding from it. In fact, completely the opposite. I'm encountering it right now in reactivity to that fact. And then I want to move my awareness to a place of non-reactivity. Right? If you see a space with nothing in it, you become the reaction to nothing. We can try to escape over here, just completely close ourselves into this little cave with nothing in it, but that's not the point of what I'm trying to share with you. This is the meditative space, the space you can be aware of in yoga practice or so many different ways. Now, You can encounter that statistic that Italy is only point, you know, one, one one hundredth, one percent of the way through to herd immunity. You can approach that, you can encounter that from this perspective of non-reactivity. And you encounter it again. Back and forth. My life used to be pretty much just in there, constantly dealing with whatever it was that was there, whatever issue or idea or situation. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but you notice you're always in a stress state that does have consequences for your physical health, your mental well-being, it's reactively focused on whatever situation comes into your consciousness. Bring it out for a moment, then bring it back.
one of the things that's striking to me and upsetting <clears throat> is how up to very recently, the last couple of weeks, we've been comparing this to the flu. We've been comparing this to um, an illness that um, is not at all comparable. The flu, I just, I just heard two doctors on a video um, saying, well, you know, the flu has killed 50 some thousand people this year. And uh, the coronavirus in this country has only killed, you know, a few hundred or whatever the number is right now. It's like, wow. We are at the end of flu season with that number. And we have literally barely begun the journey of COVID-19 passing through our nation and the individuals, us, as the population of this country and of the earth develops a herd immunity so that it doesn't keep spreading in this exponential way. And they were recommending that, oh, this isolation that we're entering into now is uh, overblown and we shouldn't be doing it so much because it has these economic costs. And those are definitely true. I'm certainly feeling it in my egg business, my little egg business. I could give you that example as the most micro example of an economic impact that goes all the way up to the biggest uh, corporations uh, in, in the world. But in Korea, there was a situation where they had a lot of cases and they did tons and tons and tons of testing and tracking. And they're having one experience, of basically an epidemic under control. And then there's Italy where they didn't um, control it in advance or be aware of it or take it, take stock as soon as they became aware of it. And they're having that happen now. And uh, Spain is following right behind them. Spain had a huge uh, gathering with tons and tons of people in it. Uh, and now cases are exploding. Here in the United States, spring break is going on. People thinking it's no big deal. And one of the things that's upsetting to me is that, like I have, I told you, been watching over an hour a day of this since January. And there are many facts that have been known about what's going on. And if you look at the actions of the United States, almost everything that has been done has been, had had the consequences of accelerating the pace of infection in this country. China was just from this one province in China and there were infections in other places and people could fly from any other place and people could fly out of Wuhan to another one being no big deal. And then the one that's just stunning is that you couldn't get a test for it here in this country. No, you can't get a test unless you yourself were in Wuhan or you were in contact with someone who was. And because of that very strict decision, people would go to the hospital and say, I think I have this, well, you can't have a test. Completely without any controls, without any awareness, without any consciousness, people were in close contact spreading this disease in the maximum possible way, which is completely without awareness. And so by the time we become aware of it, we're so far up that exponential curve. We have so many cases. We have such an enormous issue coming so soon in a country where our healthcare system pay to play, country where we allow ourselves to have guns, a country with a social network that is much less strong than many other countries. And here we go. I ah, see in that 
This is why I wanted to be here with you. Because with you, I'm like, yeah, okay. Without you, I'd probably spend hours there. And be like, you know, Lars, just look up at the sky. Look at that tree over there. Look at that chicken. See the space. Swing the pendulum back here. It's not a dishonoring of that truth. It's not an ignoring of it. It is, though, uh, being able to uh, choose the way in which I engage life. It's very common to just simply be in this reactive space. But as I said, there's consequences to that. And it is okay and it is possible. And from this space, there's even the chance perhaps to have more impact and make more difference and make more contribution. This space over here, the recognition of all, you recognize all, right? Infinity. Infinity just in the awareness of the space, but infinity in everything. In the earth that we walk on and everything that walks on the earth. It's a place to live from, a place to experience life from. So I almost didn't make this, just wanted to share it. Basically, let you help me. Thank you very much. Maybe this will be of help to you. I'll see you again soon. Love to you. Bye-bye.